It is a pleasure to be back in the studio with Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler of the Retirement Education Foundation. Kirk and Paul, they are financial instructors. And this is the Retirement Education Hour. You're going to hear a lot of great information throughout our show today, both about retirement planning, what you need to do to gain confidence for this next chapter of life. We're also going to tell you how you can register, get signed up, for the educational courses that the foundation sponsors. And these are terrific, very immersive courses that you're going to want to get registered for so that you can get armed, armed with the information you need to have a successful, confident retirement. And these are courses that are taught at local universities, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, and Oakland University. We'll kick things off with a phone number. It's 800-240-8981. You can register with the phone number or you can go online, retirementplanningedu.org. Kirk, Paul, great to be back with you. We have an important topic to broach today. It's actually kind of sobering, isn't it? It is. It's sad. Our most vulnerable segment of our population are being taken advantage of a lot. And it's happening at a much earlier age than most people think it's going to happen to them. And um, more people are vulnerable than they think, right? It's, you know, we have a baby boomer generation who candidly financially have been very successful, one of the more gen successful generations, and have amassed a lot of wealth and had a lot of success professionally. And as a result, they go into retirement way overconfident and always assume like, the bad things that can happen to people are, uh, they won't happen to me. I, I'm too smart for that. I've been too successful for that. So therefore it can't happen to me. And, and we know, we know that to be factually untrue for a lot of people. And the, the best way to prepare to being, coming a victim of what we call elder abuse is being educated, anticipate and understand where the, the risk lie. For sure. Fair? Very fair. I, I want to, if I can, put a slight bent to what you said. Yeah, please. Because you use the word vulnerable. Yeah. And you're right. The, it's true that our most vulnerable are, are victim to what we're going to talk. We're going to talk about scammers, all these scams out there. But the truth is, is that many people who don't perceive themselves as vulnerable are vulnerable too. So I want to be careful that those who those of you li listening don't think, well, this doesn't apply to me because you know, cognitively, I'm pretty smart, and you know. So you'd be surprised at how many people actually get scammed who don't perceive themselves as vulnerable. And many people wouldn't perceive themselves as vulnerable, but are. And we're going to talk about that. That's great. Right. I mean, here's here's some statistics we'll start off. We're going to talk about elder abuse, particularly around financial elder abuse. And I think a couple of the messages, it starts earlier than people think. Uh, some of it can be of much of it can be avoided through just good effective planning but right now the numbers are one in five seniors over the age of 70 are victims of elder abuse and here's here's 36 billion dollars last year was lost to el financial elder abuse that's if we add that together everyone over the age of 70 that's $43,000 per person over the age of 70 here's the scary statistic i know i'm throwing a lot of numbers at you but ready it's like 60% of all elder abuse is happening from your family. It's the family that is taking advantage of you. So it starts by education. It's exactly why uh, the Retirement Education Foundation was created. The nonprofit organization was created almost 10 years ago to help people become educated about retirement planning. What is going to drive success in retirement? What is going to prevent the surviving spouse from being a victim of elder abuse? What is going to protect the loved ones of, uh, of their money? How do we design the most effective retirement plan? And what we've done for 10 years is collected data, data from everywhere to give you the most effective way to build a retirement plan. If you'd like to register for one of these classes, they are seven hours in length. We teach them over two days or one full day, and we're teaching them at all the major universities, and we're streaming it live because of COVID so you can stay in the safety of your own home. It costs $29. You make a donation to charity of $29. All you have to do to register is go to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800-240-8981. So, Kirk... If I can throw one more statistic that I think really highlights the seriousness of this problem is, 
you gave a number, what, 36, I think, billion dollars, right? Mm -hmm. What's sad is it's estimated that one in every 44, one in every 44 older adults who are scammed ever reported. And all of this is because there's tremendous shame in admitting it and or oftentimes they don't even know it, right? So why this is such an important topic is we feel, and we've talked about this a lot, we feel the need to shine a light on this because there are a lot of people out there that this is happening to that don't want to admit it or don't know what's happening to them, and it's costing them a lot of money. And we're going to talk about all the different types of scams out there and the things to look for, but I think the one thing that you said is the key is education, and also I would say having a t- you know having trusted people, right? A trusted advisor, whether it's your attorney or your CPA or your fund, people that know you, and we have a personal story we can share. People that know you that tr- that you trust that will be on the lookout for these things as well. So I, I think we should come back and talk about that all all those things you were saying in the beginning of the next segment. I think that's where we should start because. This is a massive issues, issue impacting a lot of people. And those who are greatest uh, at risk, honestly, are those spouses, the spouse of the do-it-yourselfer, the spouse that hasn't been doing anything with the finances for many years are the ones that w- are being targeted and the most likely to be uh, taken advantage of. Because you got to imagine – you're, you, that you die, the one that's doing it themselves, responsible for the finances, they're going to die, hopefully, in their 80s, maybe 90s, right? So you're leaving a person that hasn't touched the finances in 30, 50 years, a list. I know you've made a list, guys and, and gals. I know you've made this list for that surviving spouse. Like, that's going to help them when they're 83 years old. They have to make decisions, lots of decisions. And that's where the planning comes in, Paul. That's what the class is all about, is trying to teach you how to build a retirement plan, not just to avoid elder abuse, but also how do I create the most effective, how do I maximize my income so that I don't outlive my money, but live the lifestyle I want. And and here's how it starts. Don't buy a product. There's no secret product or secret money managers that's going to give you this wisdom. It's education. So before you do anything, spend seven hours in a classroom at any of the major universities. We teach at all of them. We're streaming them live during COVID. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity, and you can register at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Or call 800-240-8981. And we're back with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. Back with Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler. Glad you're along for the Retirement Education Hour. Kirk and Paul, they are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. And be sure to register for the foundation's courses. These are held at local universities. A one or two day course, your choice. You can register online at retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. Are you on Facebook? Well, if so, be sure to follow the foundation there. Just search for Retirement Education Foundation. We're talking about a very serious topic that needs a lot of light to be shined upon it, and that is elder abuse, financial elder abuse. And, you know, it happens more than you think. Some of the statistics that you shared so far, Kirk and Paul, really get your attention but really, you're concerned about underreporting. So what I'm hearing from you is that this could just be the tip of the iceberg. Well, <clears throat> excuse me. We know it is. And, and, and let's recap really quickly. One in five people over the age of 70 are victims. That's reported. We know $36 billion a year is being lost to elder abuse, financial abuse. And we know 60% of that abuse is coming from family. Your children, your son-in-laws, daughter-in-laws, the fam- extended family, that's who's doing it. And here's the problem. We know so much of the, uh, those people being abused, financially abused, being scammed, are not reporting. Not reporting because, Paul, one of two reasons. They, they don't even know it's happening, right? You know, I, 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 we, maybe I'll share the story about the Jamaican lottery that's happening right now that a new client of ours is being exposed to. And the family's in court. It's a mess. We can talk about that. But the second one is here. Those who have been scammed but don't report it and don't tell their family because, look, especially if you're a do-it-yourselfer, 
I know you'll say to people, when I start having challenges or issues, I will give up control of my finances to somebody to help. But when you start to lose control, look, if you're a do-it-yourselfer, let's be frank, because I'm this person, we're control freaks. We want to be in control. And when you cognitively begin to lose control over anything, we are going to grab onto everything and not let go. And so if you're a, a victim but you don't want to lose control of your finances, you're not going to report it. You're not because you're likely someone's going to want to take over the control of your finances. You're going to lose your independence, your freedom, your identity. So they don't report it. They right. It just goes unreported. Right. That's a, it's, it's an excellent point. Uh, in the, the idea that people, part of the reason why people don't report is because they're afraid that they're going to lose their independence. And that matters to people as we age, right? I want to add one more reason why maybe people don't report Please. it. Please. I think you're this, you're this, this no, is no, your no, space. No, you're no, the expert. Well, no, Paul's no, it's a psychologist. All, no, it's all, it's, it's ours. <laughs> I, I think the other, the other reason is because I think there's this myth out there that the people who get scammed are the people who have Alzheimer's or dementia. They're real vulnerable. The people who are strong and smart, they don't get scammed. Right. And, and what we what we're learning is, is that really once we get into our fifties, it's a sort of a sobering thing to think about. Once we get into our fifties, we become all more vulnerable to these scams and part of this, it, it, there's a lot of reasons for that. Loneliness, right? Isolation. Part of it is there are changes in our brain. There are actually, there's research that show that our brains change in our early, you know, once we get around 50 years old and the parts of our brain that alert us to bad things happening, those parts start getting smaller and smaller. And as we get older, we, we have a more difficult time identifying these types of threats, so people don't want to admit it because they assume it's the you know it's their neighbor who has dementia that gets it. it. It can't be me. The reality is it's happening to a lot of people, even people who don't perceive themselves as vulnerable. And that's why they don't want to admit it. We often use this when we talk in the class where it it's it's um it's not dementia, it's not Alzheimer. It's just cognitive, cogni- s- s- subtle cognitive changes where and we 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 like to use almost almost simplifying it, connecting the dots. It's Harder and harder to connect the dots. By the way, it's this. This is an anecdotal. This is documented. The first cognitive skill that we begin to lose is mathematics. Connecting dots. It's not the complicated. It's the small things. It just doesn't fire quick enough. And so when things start to change just a little cognitively, this is when we are more vulnerable and exposed to fraud, scam, or even just mistakes. I mean, especially around RMDs, we see it a lot, right? In the early 70s, a lot. We're seeing it more and more frequently in 60s and 70s, just in our in our private practice, and we're responsible for about a thousand people, right? So, but we have thousands of people that have been through the class, and I can tell. I mean, we we it's it's not hard to tell when dots aren't being connected as easily. Now, some of them maybe never – they never did connect so easy when it came to finances, but there is there is things that were easier when you're younger become difficult, more difficult to, as you get older, and this is where the mistakes and scams can – scammers can take advantage. Especially the population that you referenced earlier, which is the surviving spouse oh, gosh. who never may have connected the dots financially, right? Now, all of a sudden, they're in a position where they have to connect them completely – and here's one more additional thing. One of the things the scammers do is they force you to make decisions quickly, right? right? On the spot. You got to do it now or else something bad's going to happen. Right. And we know that the speed of our processing slows down for all of us. That's right? normal. It's normal. It's a normal part of aging. All of these things are like a perfect storm. So I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to, I, I, I'm going to push on you guys a little listeners. If you're a do it yourself for what you are, you are really putting your spouse who's not involved in a very vulnerable position as you get older. I know you think you got it worked out with your spreadsheets and your lists. I'm telling you, you're going to have someone grieving, having a lot of anxiety and stress that hasn't looked at finances in years, and your lists are going to be about useless. This is all we do. I, in the last quarter, we've had, it, it's ridiculous, 20, 20 people die with surviving spouses that can't do anything for themselves. Highly functional people still can't do anything for themselves, can't make decisions, can't figure things out. They are vulnerable. You need, this goes back to, 
having a plan and a team, there needs to be a team. Your advisor, your CPA, and your attorney better be talking and working together. Because when things go bad, when things happen, when you die, you become incapacitated, that team needs to be familiar that healthy or surviving spouse needs to trust, and there needs to be a plan in place to execute that you guys did together, not once you started having problems, before you had problems. So this is why we teach a class so you know how to build your team, how to build your retirement plan, how to not be a victim, how to have freedom in retirement with an income plan that you can never outlive, with tax efficiency. We teach these classes seven hours in length at all the major universities and streaming live through because of COVID right now. $29 donation to charity. All you have to do to register is go to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800-240-8981. Back with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. Glad to be here with Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. I'm Megan Mozak. And this is the Retirement Education Hour. Kirk and Paul, they hold classes with the foundation, and these are held at local universities. These are retirement planning classes, a real download of what you need in a 21st century retirement. And it's a lot. We want you to know how to get registered if you want to arm yourself with the best information for a modern retirement. You can call to get registered, 800-240-8981, or you're welcome to go online retirementplanningedu.org. These are taught at local universities, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, and Oakland University. Now, Kirk and Paul, we've been talking about elder abuse, financial elder abuse. It's fairly widespread, maybe more widespread than many of us thought. You know, I think many times, Kirk and Paul, we think, well, the people being victimized are you know, maybe very, very elderly, or they have dementia, or perhaps they're not well-educated. You say that's not always the case, right? Give me an example. So we're going to tell you a story about uh, someone we knew, or no, <laughs> not still, new, we still know, no, who was um, a victim of a romance scam. Now, and it's a very sad story for someone in their, I think they were in their, she was in her early to mid 60s, yeah. early 60s. Um, so very sophisticated woman. I think she had her master's in education, sat on boards of school systems, I think. Uh, super bright individual. Uh, husband was bright as well. Very, very bright. Right. Professional. That's right. Can we That's say? Right. We, uh, whatever. Just he dealt with money. Let's That's what he did. He dealt with money. <laughs> right, right. Very sophisticated. In fact, he was a, 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 in many ways a mentor for me. Right, right, right. Growing up and yeah. taught me a lot. Yeah, yeah. Right? Me as so, well. Me as well. So um, v- both of these people very much influenced our lives. And um, he died. He passed away um, young. And here's the problem. He was the one responsible for the finances, and honestly, and I'm going to let Paul tell the story of what happened, but the, the reason she this didn't get stopped and prevented is because there was not a team in place. Really, her husband did not leave a team in place. Um, there was just uh, an, a, an accountant, a CPA that was taking care of her. That's it. Right. And, and she's sophisticated and bright, but there wasn't a team communicating that could have prevented this. It could have been prevented if a team was in place to stop it. Tell the story, Paul, of what happened. Well, she met somebody and this this happens a lot. She met someone on the Internet. Right. She was lonely. Um, he had passed away and they were married a long time and she was lonely and met somebody on the Internet and fell in love, fell in love. Never, never met. Never physically met this person. He, he, he continually promised he was going to meet her. And over the course of a couple years, um, basically, he convinced her that he needed money. He needed money to come visit. He needed money for a visa. He needed money uh, for medical insurance to come here. He de- businesses. Businesses. He convinced her he needed money. And what she, she ultimately did was basically liquidated her entire net worth, including refinanced her home, including grandchildren's education fund basically liquidated everything million Mil- uh, millions oh, oh, yeah, over over a million, over a million dollars over a million dollars 
And here's the thing. It happened over a long period of time. That's the one thing about these romance scams. It, it's not, you know, it, it, these are long-term relationships you have on the internet, and and it costs people a lot of money because it goes for a long time. This happened over a course of a couple years. Now, the whole family is educated, yeah. professionals, yeah. bright, everyone, everyone involved. She is a very bright, sophisticated woman. I know you're thinking to yourself, she couldn't have been. We're telling you, especially when someone you love and you've been with a long time dies, things you're vulnerable. You're just vulnerable. Actually, loneliness itself increases a risk of being scammed by 30%. Just being lonely, $85 million in 2019 were lost because of these what we call romance scams. That happens way more frequently. And again, these are the people who don't – she was young. It. And did she tell anybody? Who wants to admit? Because here's the thing. Once you lose a little bit, you're, you know, she was probably a little embarrassed, right? A team could have prevented caught it, would have caught, caught it, it got That's the right. family involved. They would have gone to court. It would have been, she might have been mad, but it would have stopped it. Right. It right. would have stopped it. Right. She lost everything. Everything. And has no idea who he or she was. That's it. I mean, it could be another country. No one has, and there's, there's no prosecutor. There's no way to get the money back. It was finally, eventually reported, and they've been yeah, yeah. doing, but nothing, nothing's coming out of it. They're yeah. not going to catch this person, right? Right. And it's really sad. I mean, it was totally preventable and avoidable. And in in the point of the story, because everyone everyone thinks they're invincible. It wouldn't right. happen to me. I'm too brave. I'm I'm too strong for this. This you don't know until you're in that position, right? You just don't know. This was a young, educated woman young i mean there was no cognitive impairment still she's still no cognitive issues no she's still bright <laughs> right? woman still bright woman 15, right 20 years later yeah a husband that's all he did was money and gave i mean he was a mentor of a lot of people he's a pretty bright guy yeah right i mean sad story uh you know he had his list for her he had everything written down for her it didn't help there was no team there wasn't a plan in place all of this could have been prevented just through some education and planning yeah and, you know, Paul, it just, it's its why. Before you make any choices when it comes to what to invest in, how to invest, how to build a plan, you need to start. You've got noise coming from everywhere. You've got opinions. Everyone's an expert, right? You can read all the books. And ultimately, it's because there's so much conflicting consensus in what you do that many people do nothing. Right? They just shut down and freeze because they don't know what to do, or they fall for the general cookie-cutter, one-size-fits-all solutions. This is why the charity started teaching these classes. This is why the foundation was created almost 10 years ago to spend seven hours, 200 pages, to taking you through what is a comprehensive, holistic plan. A, what does it even look like? Very few of you have ever seen it. It's not a dial of probability. It's not a bunch of spreadsheets. What does a comprehensive look like? A plan, a comprehensive plan look like? How do you me- look? You are never going to be more vulnerable in retirement, so therefore you're going to way under. Many of you are going to way underspend what you otherwise could be spending if you had a plan. This is why you need to make a twenty nine dollar donation, attend a seven hour courses at any of the major universities. They're taught at all of them. You know, University of Michigan, Michigan State University, both the Novi campus and the Troy campus, Oakland University, Eastern Michigan. We have a learning center in Livonia. We're streaming them live so you can do them in the comfort of your home with with COVID. $29 donation, register at retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800-240-8981. And there's much more Retirement Education Hour straight ahead. Glad you're with us for the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak here with financial instructors, Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler of the Retirement Education Foundation. We've been telling you about the foundation's courses. These are taught at local universities, including University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, and Oakland. Your choice, either a one-day course or a two-day course, you can register online at retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. If you're ready to get serious about retirement planning, this is a great first step. Make sure you attend the course, 800-240-8981. On our show today, we've been broaching a topic that is fairly complex, 
It's quite sobering. It's also very important that you are aware of it. We're talking about scams, financial scams on older adults. It's pretty rampant, actually more so than I even thought. Kirk and Paul, sometimes the best way to learn more about it is through real life situations. And you've been sharing those with us. What else do you want us to know today? Well, I've got another story I want to share. Um, So this is a really interesting story of someone who is a little bit older, uh, was is in uh, his uh, early 80s. And it's a scenario where he thinks he doesn't have any cognitive issues. And quite frankly, none of his family realized he did until he has lost a lot of money. Right. And here's the story. He's a pretty large. He was a pretty large developer. Uh, retired, obviously, but he can tell you every building he's built, they, they still own buildings. He can tell you how many years he's depreciated, what they're cash flowing. I mean, he is sharp. He knows the the numbers about what has happened in the past. And so everyone thinks he's got it together, but he has come to find out and he's a, and, and he's a new client in our private practice and we're trying to help through this. But He's $250 million into the, this Jamaican lottery scam, if you've ever heard about the Jamaican lottery scam. So here's the challenge. He doesn't think he has an issue. He's $250,000 into this scam, and he won't give up control. So now he and his kids and family are in court fighting. The kids are fighting for control. Mom's stuck in the middle, so mom's taking the side of dad, of course, and he thinks the kids are trying to steal his money. And all the kids are trying to do is stop this scam because he's still going, falling for the scam. He's lost the ability to control his money because he can't connect dots and he's cognitively lost control. Paul, you can speak psychologically more to this, but I can tell you right now, if I ask him, he can tell you every building he owns, what he's depreciated, what it's cash flowing, what he's got in. I mean, it's amazing. But when, you, when you've when you broached the subject, what does he say? Well, he, he, doesn't, he, he, he doesn't see it. He no, doesn't. He doesn't. He has no insight at all. He doesn't. Yeah, and the he family he's fine. and the family believes him, right? B- of course. Well, uh, they uh, did. They did until now, right? right I mean, right. they didn't know because he was so sharp on the right, all of right. All. Well, here's the thing: a lot of these cognitive disorders that we talk about, you know, long term memory is still fairly intact, right? right. I mean, I, I I've been in nursing homes where people can get on a piano and play a song from Mozart, but doesn't know their name. Right. right, don't know their children's name. They could tell you everything they did when they were kids, but didn't know what they ate earlier in the day. Right, so right. so it can be deceiving. Right, these people can appear. People with cognitive issues can appear like they're intact. And here's the thing: who you know, families don't want to believe. I mean, would you like to believe that your spouse can't? I mean, no. No, nobody wants to face it. Because, you know, especially no- when I mean, for this gentleman. His identity was money. That's right. Finance. That's, that's he right. was sharp, that's successful. Right. That's right. So the, the spouse certainly, the, that, that spouse certainly doesn't want to take that from him. Right, right, right. right? right. And they're in, a little bit in denial. And, right, right. In, in my husband's fine or my, right. dad is fine. I, and, I, and, and, and the wife and kids need the, the father to be fine so the, so the status quo doesn't change. And, and, you, know, and, and my, you know, I heard you say that, that there was concern that maybe the kids – he thought the kids were just stealing from him. And the reality is kids do actually they do. steal from parents often. I hate to say it. So, you know. That's a whole different. We the, can tell that story and, and, of how many times we've prevented that because yes. of the team. That's right. That's Whether right. the attorney, the CPA, or the advisor, all talking, working together, identify some red flag pops up. And it can prevent these things. All of these things are preventable through a plan, younger Earlier the better. Build a plan. Summarize. Write out what is going to happen. When it's going to happen. It's a living, breathing document, okay. Paul. Right? Yeah, it explain, changes. So it's for a okay. moment, take a minute. Explain. How does a plan prevent this? Well, he, here's the deal. Here's a plan. Plan is going to spell out where money is coming from, from which accounts to do what at different ages. Now you're going to say, yeah, but that changes. Of course it changes. And your team should be the one changing it. Right? You should have a team of people. So I can only tell you what we teach in the class is how to build out a 30-year plan, including when am I taking income, from which accounts at what age, if we have a market event, what account do we pivot to to prevent sequence of return risk, projecting out taxes for 30 years and find the most tax-efficient path 
to take income from, not to bump brackets, to minimize taxable portion of Social Security. And then everything that's done in spreadsheets is summarized account by account when things, if one spouse gets sick, where does the spouse go to get? pay for that long-term care event? And how much money do you have available for that long-term care event? If another spouse dies, where does the surviving spouse take income from? Where do the accounts of the decedent go to? It's all mapped out. So because it's mapped out, yep. people don't feel this desperation to, to, to cling on to these scams, scams because, because they know everything's in order, right? They don't feel the need to, to get on the phone and talk to an advisor who's calling them or some someone's trying to sell them something because they have things. A team. Uh, they have a team who they can count on. To, in, in our private practice, if someone has a Medicare question, they call us. Yeah. Right. So if someone has a Medicare scam and they're out there, trust me. Yep. Right. They don't. They don't fall for it. Whether it's financial, real estate, medical, their parents' medical, their parents' inheritance, legal, taxes, every single thing, our clients call us. Right. We've got the CPA, we've got the attorney, we have a team. That's what we teach in the class, not about our team. That's not what we're teaching. We're going to teach you how to find to build the, your own team. Build your own team, right? right? And build your own plan. We we can only help about 40% of the people that want our help. So we're going to teach you how to choose an advisor. How to understand this industry is about creating a perception that isn't always reality. To make them just appear to look smarter, bigger, to do more than they actually can do. And that's part of the class. So before you do anything, spend seven hours in a classroom, in a university setting. Or if you're worried about COVID, stay at home. We'll stream it to you in your home. You'll get a 200-page textbook that you can reference. Before you do anything, get a team. We'll teach you how to get that team. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity, and then you can register for one of these courses. You can go to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800-240-8981. And we will be back. There's much more Retirement Education Hour straight ahead. Here with Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler. If you are on Facebook, be sure to like the foundation, Retirement Education Foundation. It is always a pleasure to be here with Kirk and Paul. I always learn a lot, and you can learn even more if you attend the foundation's courses taught at local universities, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, or Oakland University. It's a one- or two-day course, your choice. You can register either by calling or going online. The phone number is 800-240-8981. This is a very immersive course so that you walk away with confidence for your retirement plan. You can also go online to register at retirementplanningedu.org. We're talking about a form of elder abuse, and we're talking about scams that Oftentimes we see older individuals fall for it, get taken advantage of. Let's talk, Kirk and Paul, about some of the most common scams for people over the age of 60. Well, so I, this segment, we're just going to bullet some of them and quickly describe. The first one, probably most relevant right now that I can think of is the IRS and the stimulus check, right? So starting with the stimulus check scam, no, no one's going to email you, contact you saying, we need personal information to send you your stimulus check. No one's calling, texting, or emailing. So if you get a call, text, or email, you need to ignore that. No one is calling or texting or emailing you wanting your personal, if they already have your personal information to give you your stimulus check. So you don't need to do that. You don't have to do anything special to get that. It's coming to you. The second one, Paul, do you, you want to do one first? Uh, yeah, I'll do, I'll do you one. Do one. Uh, so, so this is a, a grandparent scam. Yeah, it's been around a long time. And, and here's the thing. Still going. All grandparents, what do they do? They love their grandchildren. So what happens is someone calls and poses as the grandchild and say, hi, grandma. Do you know who this is? And of course, grandparents don't want to admit they don't know. So they may guess and say, hey, Johnny. Now, all of a sudden, the scam artist has a fake, has the identity of the, of the grandchild. And typically what they'll, they'll do is say, yeah, this is Johnny, grandma. And they'll go on to say, you know, I need money for school. I need money because I got in trouble. I went, I'm in jail or, or I can't pay a bill. Can you give me money? And usually it's in the form of a visa card, right? And grandparents, it happens all the time. A lot. A lot. They're on a small, right, smaller, typically smaller dollar amounts. Right. It can get bigger, but it's common. Yeah. It's really common. Yep. 
I'll give another one. The IRS scam. Look, okay? The IRS isn't sending you emails. They're not going to text you. They're not going to call you letting you know that you your identity's been stolen or you need to you haven't paid your taxes, you need to send money in. Anything related to the IRS, my our very strong opinion should be that you need to contact the IRS to confirm that they are really needing something from you directly. You need to call or go online directly to the irs.gov and contact them if someone reaches out to you to confirm it is truly the IRS. This is very, very common. They're trying to steal your identity so that they can file a tax return in your name to get your refunds or make up a fictitious 1040 tax return showing greater amounts were withheld so they can get a bigger refund sent to them pretending to be you. And you got to be very careful with this. I have another one. Please. Social Security Administration, right? Some will call and say they're from the Social Security Administration and maybe they'll tell you that your benefits are going to get cut off if you don't give them their information. And oftentimes these are from area codes that like from, you know, area code 202, like Washington, D.C. So it looks legitimate, right? And they'll say, you know, or Medicare. We, we, I've seen this with Medicare, right? Well, they'll say they're from the Medicare administration and they need your personal information to make sure that your Medicare benefits don't get, get cut off. And here's the thing. They sound legitimate. They sound professional, right? They, they don't sound like scammer. And they, what they do is they'll say, you, get, you need to give me this information now. If you don't give it to me now, you're going to lose your benefits. You're going to get into trouble. So people feel this pressure to have to make a decision immediately. And that's not ever a good situation to be in frankly they're hitting you guys those people over the age of 60 in every direction Mm -hmm. they are literally hitting you in every direction let alone technology right computer the the computers oh there's a huge there's tons they're phishing right they're constantly phishing to try to get your passwords they're stealing your keystrokes they're trying to get your information and whatever they can do every little extra piece of information they can put the puzzle together yeah so they are hitting you everywhere you know i actually i read a horrible story about a very bright competent woman who basically lost out about two hundred thousand dollars it started with like 10 because basically someone called and said your computer was broken and they needed to get in your computer into her computer to fix it and once they got in once they got control of that computer, it was too late. And, and it basically, they would, they would come back and say, if you don't give me more money, I'm going to do this. If you don't, and, and she kept giving and giving and giving. Before you know it, it was $200,000 later. That's unbelievable. Right. Go ahead. Uh, you know, the reality is, is that we are so all dependent on the Internet, right? Because of our dependence on the Internet, people have access to a lot of information about us. And oftentimes, people who are older aren't as skilled or used to understanding the Internet. So it's easy to believe some of these scams. You just have to have your antennas up. And, and you click to... links and attachments oh, t- all the time. All the time, all the time. you got a virus, now they've got in. It's, you, right, you just, right. you got to be careful. Here's, here's the moral of the story, Paul. I, I interrupt you. We're running out of time yeah, in the segment. Ahead. But the moral of the story is, and we keep saying, and I think every segment, a team will help prevent a lot of these things from happening. No one thinks they need a team. I know you're really smart people and been very successful, but you're going to hit, get hit in all directions. And things will get more confusing. And when you have a team, so in our private practice, and I know that's not what this radio show is about, but I can tell you we have a mortgage person we've worked with for 20 years, a realtor we've been working with for over 10 years, Medicare people working for years and years, repair people working for years, home improvement people for years. We have teams of people that we are looking over, watching to make sure they don't take advantage of you as you get older or your surviving spouse. That is the p- purpose of the team. And, 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 and at the end of the day, it's why we started teaching these classes. We saw it, 10,000 baby boomers a day retiring. We saw these very smart, competent people becoming victims to elder abuse. We see these people way under living their means because they're scared in retirement. They don't know that they can, they still think they only can spend 4% a year in retirement because that's what the industry's told them, right? You got to come to a class, spend seven hours. This is an advanced class. You guys, this will give you value. All you have to do is make a $29 donation. You get a seven-hour class, 200-page textbook at all the major universities, or you can do it in your home. You have no excuse. 
What's the excuse? Educate yourself. Empower yourself. Reti re register at retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800-240-8981. More with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. We're glad you're with us for the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak, joined by financial instructors, Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler of the Retirement Education Foundation. We've been telling you about the foundation's courses. These are immersive retirement courses, really a deep dive into all things retirement here in the 21st century. We want you to feel confident signing up for these courses. It's a great first step. And they're taught at local universities, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, and Oakland University. Your choice, either a one-day course or a two-day course, you can call to register 800 240 8981 or go online retirementplanningedu.org. Kirk and Paul, the issue today we're talking about is fraud, financial fraud that's targeted toward older individuals. It's really a form of elder abuse. It's pretty widespread. You've opened our eyes to just how terrible it can be, how dangerous it is. I think the key and what I'd like to know is how do we prevent this for ourselves in the future, but also uh, maybe for our, our parents, our aging parents or relatives. So one more time for those people who may have joined us late. Let's give the number and then we'll give the solution. Here it is. One in five people over the age of 70 are victims of elder abuse. And that's what's reported. We know tons go unreported. $36 billion a year is lost. The most common are people surviving spouses of a do-it-yourselfer. We know that. All of it's preventable. Paul and I come on this show every week. Like, do, I hope everyone understands this show is being brought to you through a charity, a foundation, the Retirement Education Foundation. We're here educating. That's it. You might notice there's never solicitation, but literally, I think every segment we're begging people. We're literally begging people to go educate themselves, spend, invest seven hours of their time. Okay, we're, we're asking for a $29 donation to charity. So A, the t charity can survive and continue to do this, these shows and these classes, but also so that you know that this isn't a solicitation, it's an education. You're making a financial commitment. That's why we charge it. But it is a little crazy to me that we have to beg people to I invest in their own education but to prepare for retirement. But the truth is, we don't, a lot of people show so it turns, that's true. When you say we beg, that's true. The we, truth is, we're not really begging because it's always full. That's true. That's true. It I, feels I, like we're begging all no, the but time. I, I am shocked. I, I just would think that. I mean, we have waiting lists for people to come to class. I, I get it, but it is surprising. It's. I think people think it's like elementary one hundred and one. I'm financially sophisticated, so I don't need this. But it's guys. This is. And gals, this is this is an advanced course. This course is designed for people with resources, not designed for the average retiree who has two hundred thousand dollars saved for retirement. I mean, people are shocked. That's it. That's what the average retiree has for retirement. It's two hundred thousand dollars saved. Well, you can use the general rules, and the general rules are going to work for you. That cookie cutter size plan for someone who has two hundred thousand dollars, it makes sense. That's who it's designed for. But for those of you who are listening, and I know who listens to our radio show, we know the demographics. You have resources. That one size fits all cookie cutter plan is not going to work for you. Here's what's going to happen: you're going to way underspend what you could otherwise spend because you're using rules that apply to people with two hundred thousand dollars saved. That's what's going to happen, and you're going to be afraid to spend, and you're going to allow short-term market events and what's going on in the economy and who's being elected determine how much and when you spend, which is not freedom. You are the targets of this elder abuse. You are. You've got the resources. They're coming after you. You're the ones that need a team. Like, why is it that you can be so smart professionally, save so much money, and I know you've invested well. What you guys have done to grow your money is not hard. That's the, the invest to grow your money is the easiest thing you'll do in your. It's not hard. <laughs> Buy an index fund and you would have won. That's all you had to do. But spending your money, when to spend, how to spend, from where, that's the hard part. Minimize taxes, protect your surviving spouse, protect your loved ones, protect yourself. That is the. This is the first time you're ever going to do this in your life, guys and gals. This is the first time you'll do it. We've done it thousands of times. You've got instructors, CPAs, attorneys, and advisors, fiduciaries who are going to teach you have done it thousands of times. What do you have to lose? Yeah, I mean, learn I, how to build a plan. 
Sorry. No, no. I mean, I, I think it really boils down to, you know, trust. I think, I think people always just assume, right, that there's something, you know, there's a dinner seminar, right? Keep in mind, keep in mind, everybody who's listening gets probably an invitation every week to some dinner seminar, right? That they, they do. People, sure. People assume this is going to be like a dinner seminar. Folks, that isn't a charity. That's right. That's not a charity. It's not eight hours of an education. At the end of the day, I mean, Kirk, you say, we say this all the time. Knowledge is power. Right. Everyone understands that. Everyone appreciates the more information you have, the better consumer you're going to be, the smarter you're going to be, the better decision and the less vulnerable you're going to be to all of these scams. Right. It really is. Empower yourself by getting educated and you're going to be more protected from all of these things that we keep talking about week after week after week. Yeah. A plan. Right. It, it, so so first you have to know what a plan is. And really, most of you don't. I, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to say 99% of them don't know a plan. They've never seen a plan. It's not a dial of probability of success, whether you're going to outlive your money. It's not a, a, a spreadsheet taking 4% out and then your RMDs, required minimum. Do, that's not it. Not a brokerage. It's, it's not a brokerage it's statement. It's not a brokerage statement. It's not, you know, w- w- what percentage of your money is in different sectors. You know, what's in small cap, large cap, growth, value. That's not a plan. That was to accumulate wealth. A plan is now going to show you when to take income from which accounts at what age so to not run out of money because of sequence of return risk. Where do I pivot when we have market volatility? What account do I pivot to to take income from? What should I take income from? See, what's going to drive your success in retirement is making sure you're taking money from the right places at the right times. Understanding how Social Security is taxed and how to minimize that, how to minimize taxes on cap, long-term capital gains and dividends, understanding how to manage the tax brackets, how we to construct a plan is almost like building a puzzle, right? And you, you guys have a lot of pieces to a puzzle that might not fit a retirement plan, even though it's a really attractive piece of a puzzle that you love. Invest seven hours of your time and make a $29 donation charity and go to one of our courses at all the major universities. We'll stream it to you during COVID so you can stay at home if you want, or we're doing small groups right now. All you have to do is go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any references to protection, safety, or lifetime income generally refer to fixed insurance products, never securities or investments. Insurance guarantees are backed by the financial strength and claims-paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This radio show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during the show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is a paid placement.